could you possibly have an unauthorized Chanel bag in your closet? Claims of stolen serial numbers, unauthorized bags, counterfeits, non-genuine bags. For more information, keep watching. Keep watching to the end where I talk about my next steps and recommendations on how to handle this if you are affected. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Vanity Table Talks where we discuss fashion news and other related topics. Everything said in this video is my very own opinion based on information that I collected on the internet and my personal experiences as a consumer of luxury brands. I am not affiliated with any brands that I discuss in this video. I am also not a lawyer and I do not give legal advice. The picture in the thumbnail is my very own Chanel classic flat bag that I purchased and it is not for sale. So let's get into this case. This lawsuit was first filed back in 2018, but it's been ongoing. I am here with an update on the case between Chanel Inc., the plaintiff, against what goes around comes around WGACA LLC, where a jury has sided in favor of Chanel. The jury has sided with Chanel on all four counts. This includes two counts of trademark infringement, one count of unfair competition, and one count of false advertisement, which resulted in $4 million in damages. I want to talk about the potential implications of this jury verdict. And I also want to talk about the potential impacts to the consumers like myself. This is a really interesting case because it goes deep into some of Chanel's procedures in regards to establishing authenticity and the tracing of that, like their inventory controls. Based on what I read in this case, a Chanel bag is assigned a serial number once the authorized manufacturer has ensured that the bag meets all requirements. It was revealed that 30,000 serial numbers were stolen from an authorized factory back in 2012. It was also revealed in the case that Chanel uses an inventory system. It's called O-R-L-I system that they track the allotment of serial numbers to factories. I also read that when a serial number is stolen, it is voided in their inventory control system, which is what happened with the 30,000 serial numbers. So when this case started, there were like more claims against what goes around comes around, but some of those claims got thrown out or dismissed. What was left was the claims that were in regard to the two counts of trademark infringement, unfair competition, and false advertisement. So there were four counts and there were four claims. There was one where it was 11 non-genuine and counterfeit bags that included those stolen serial numbers, allegedly. Number two was there were two non-genuine and counterfeit Chanel branded bags that didn't match their inventory system. And then three, there were 50 non-genuine with serial numbers that had been voided in the inventory audits at their factories. And four, which is so interesting to me, there were 779 non-genuine point of sale counter support items that were never authorized for sale by Chanel. I also read that these 779 non-genuine point of sale items could be free gifts with purchase. So like if you know if you purchase something from Chanel, you get a free gift like a pouch with the logo or the brand name Chanel on it. Yeah, it wasn't clear to me when I read it in the original claim, but later as they went to trial, there were some motions that were filed to clarify this. Also, I read in this case that there was a claim that included a pirated item, but what goes around comes around clarified that the item was a pouch so I'm assuming it's one of those free gifts with purchase, but 
Don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. I do recommend that you read the case. It is a very interesting read, or at least I think so, in my opinion. So based on the fact that the jury actually sided with Chanel on those four claims, what does this mean for the resellers? Because this there's some implications here for them, particularly on fair use defense in the infringement cases. And and even I'm sure it's going to be some impacts to their business practices of using brand names and advertisement. But I'm really more interested in how that is going to affect consumers like myself. In particular, how are the resellers going to describe and even determine what is authentic Chanel from this point forward? At a minimum, there sounds like there's a new definition of counterfeit as described in this case by Chanel. In addition, this case introduces a new category of counterfeits that they are calling unauthorized. Chanel identified certain bags as being unauthorized. And what it sounded like to me was these were bags that may have not been intended for sale by the brand. I've heard someone describe them as display bags, but from what I read, it sounded like they are gifts, like items that Chanel would give, you know, like VIP gifts, I'm thinking, or, you know, even just not even VIP when you make a purchase. I have several of those types of bags that you buy the products and you get a free gift. Those are what I think they are referring to when they talk about these unauthorized bags. When it comes to the display bags, I have even been offered a bag that was on display. So I do know that Chanel does sell display bags. So I don't think that that's what they're referring to as unauthorized. In addition to redefining counterfeit as well as the unauthorized bags, we also need to know the legal ramifications. What we know as counterfeit today is illegal like very illegal. If there is a new definition or expansion of the definition, what are the legal ramifications for that? Is it, does it fall under the same legal purview as the definition that we know today? And also these unauthorized bags, is that again, any legal ramifications for those? Because this is getting a little scary. I totally understand bags that were not produced by Chanel that someone else was infringing by just, you know, putting their markings and logos on it. But now we're talking about maybe bags that were produced and have a Chanel marketing, but that came from the company, but they just, you know, didn't authorize the sale of it. The other huge question that I have is what does this mean for consumers who have unfortunately purchased bags that fit into these categories? This is very scary to me because according to the case, there are over 30,000 serial numbers that was stolen. If consumers ended up with bags with one of those serial numbers this this is not good this is not good at all as a consumer i would just like to see more done to warn the public i would like to see more done to combat production and sale of counterfeit goods what goes around comes around i don't think they're the bad guy the bad guy would be the you know the counterfeiters and i don't see them getting any of this action they're skating by this and that's where i think the real problem is and i would hope that the resellers and the brands can come together and combat this because that's where i think it could really stop you know if the resellers and the brands get together and communicate and you know inform of what's going on, I think that whenever a counterfeit shows up at a reseller's door, 
then they will be prepared to identify it and report it and, you know, put a stop to it, basically. You know, this all just makes me wonder, what is the end goal for the brand? You know, what is it that they are hoping to accomplish, you know, other than just protecting their brand, um, their intellectual property and all that stuff. But in terms of their consumers, I often hear that brands do this to protect the consumers in these cases. The best way to protect consumers is putting a stop to the counterfeiting. I don't think, in my opinion, that going after the resellers in a way to prevent them from being in business is the answer. Because as a consumer, I have the right to purchase a legal pre-love bag. I'm a huge, huge supporter of sustainability, you know, being environmentally friendly. I do not want to contribute to fashion waste or, you know, um, fashion pollution. So I'm just trying to be responsible. So I have a right to purchase pre-love. But when purchasing, I do want the authentic, the actual item that the brand has made, you know. So I do want the resellers to, in fact, hold their end of the bargain and, and make sure that the bag is authentic. But I, I realize, you know, even more so now that I don't think. I just, in my opinion, can't see how this could be done without working with the brands. Now, I'm just wondering if the brands really want to work with the resellers or maybe they want to work with certain resellers or maybe it's about regulation, you know, some type of guidance that and I get it, some standards across the board in terms of reselling. Because honestly, I can see where there needs to be some kind of regulation there. I'm not affiliated with any reseller or any brand, and I'm not a reseller myself. In fact, I am not trying to make a profit off of selling bags. I mean, I do try to break even, but I do not, you know, make a living off of selling bags. I do use my bags as assets in my business in some cases. But I'm not in the business of reselling bags for profit. But the question remains, where does the brands stand on, you know, sustainability and, you know, the resale of their bags? I do see where Chanel has partnered with Farfetch and that is telling me that, okay, maybe they are interested in partnering with resellers and that you know that's great and that was like good news to me because that's what I want to see but now I'm I'm really leaning toward thinking that maybe it's really about having a partnership where there could be some guidelines there and I'm all for that I'm definitely all for it what I'm not for is if there is a agenda to remove resellers and I just don't agree. I do think that having the resellers there is a good thing for sustainability. But my question is really, what is the goal? If resellers have no way of knowing if a bag is authorized, and I'm going to use authorized versus authentic because we have the authentic bags that have the proper documentation but the unauthorized that's a little different because the unauthorized particularly those that have been voided out of the brand's inventory control system you can't look at a bag and determine that this is something that you you literally would have to get that information from the brand so yeah, so I don't see any way around that but to work with the brands directly. So I'm wondering, is that the goal? I mean, if I was a reseller, I would definitely want to work with the brand.
let's just be honest. There's going to be a transfer of ownership when it comes to anything because people don't live forever. Even if it's just in a state sale that the person that owned the bag originally they passed away. It becomes a part of the estate. It doesn't get passed down. Maybe like in my case, I don't have daughters. My bad. It won't get passed down to my sons. They're, they're most likely they're going to sell it, you know? And so there's going to be that transfer. And that's where resellers come in. Another example is, you know, let's say you own a bag that you purchased, you know, several years ago, but your lifestyle changed and you no longer, you know, need that bag. It doesn't meet any of your needs and you want to sell it on. Again, that's where resellers come in. I'm all about sustainability and I'm hoping that that's what the end goal is for all parties involved. You know, saying you're protecting the consumer, that's noble. But one thing I do know is that all humans, whether you are a consumer of a brand or not, will be affected by the environment. So it's even more protection. I mean, it's just socially responsible to promote sustainability. And I see the resellers doing that. Now, I do think that the resellers have a responsibility to their consumers to ensure that they are selling authentic bags, particularly being that they are advertising that the bag is authentic. And I do appreciate the fact that Chanel comes forward and report this information whenever they suspect and find that a, a reseller is not. But... I'm a person of answers. You know, I'm a person that wants to solve problems. But I think a real solution has to come from some type of partnership working together to make sure to combat against counterfeiting. Counterfeiting is the root of the problem. These bags getting to the reseller, unknowing to the reseller, is symptoms but the root is when something happens like the theft of the serial numbers it leads to more and more counterfeiting so you know if you get to the root of things it's trying to combat this counterfeiting that's the problem here so after reading everything in this case i still have several questions actually i have three questions. My question number one is what is the goal of brands in terms of sustainability and the resale of their previously sold items? Do the brands wish to partner with resellers? Question number two is will the definition of counterfeit be extended to include bags with serial numbers that have been voided or have a discrepancy in the brand's inventory system? And what will the legal ramifications be for selling and buying a counterfeit and or unauthorized bag based on a newly expanded definition? And last but not least, question number three is what are the consumer's rights and protections to include compensation for being sold a counterfeit and or unauthorized bag? I'm thinking if you're one of the people that actually got a counterfeit bag or one of these bags being termed counterfeit because it includes one of the stolen serial numbers and you got this from a reseller. Like, what is your protection? Can you then take this bag back to the reseller and get your money back? Like, you know, that's my biggest concern. My next steps would be to look at my collection and determine if any of my Chanel bags were produced within the 2012 time frame. So the serial number would have started with 16 through 17 during that time period. So I did look through my collection and I did not thankfully have any bags that was produced during that time. I did have one boy bag that 
it was actually produced, I would say, 2013, uh, based on the serial code. The serial code was 1-8, so that was just after that period of time. Check out my Keeping Up With The Collection series where I show all of the bags that I currently have in my collection. As I get answers to my questions, I will be providing an update in my Vanity Table Talk videos. So let's talk in the comments. What are your thoughts on this case? Have you read this entire case? Did you purchase any Chanel bags during 2012 from a reseller? And let me know, is this going to affect, you know, where you purchase Chanel from? So are you still going to purchase pre-love? Are you still going to purchase from the reseller, particularly the reseller in this case? I'm curious about that. I mean, it's unfortunate that it, you know, this goes down this way, but I can't blame people for being afraid to purchase pre-love because of issues like this, because nobody wants to spend that much money and not get something authentic. I mean, like, it's one thing if you're out there intentionally trying to buy uh, counterfeit, which that's your business. But for those who truly enjoy the brand and that, you know, want only authentic items and being told that it's authentic and being sold something that is not, you know, that it's just not right. And I do think that we need a level of protection from that. And, you know, kudos to Chanel for doing what they think is protecting us. But again, I do hope that the brands and the resellers can come together and, you know, really provide a united front and force of protection for consumers thank you for tuning in to this episode of vanity table talks don't forget to like share comment and subscribe thanks for watching